Arkham Insignia has many flexible 2D machining strategies. In this demonstration, we're going to look at a few of them. The sign we're going to create is going to have inlaid lettering for the exit, a simple 2D pocket machine for the arrow. For the waves, we're just going to take them and put the tool, a nice ball nose tool along there for decoration. We're going to drill out the holes in the corners and then we're going to do a cutout pass around the outside. To start with, let's look at the inlaying of the lettering. I want to take a separate piece of material and inlay it into this piece of material. One of the problems I've got though is that when I cut inside of here, what's going to happen is the tool I use is going to round the corners so you can see it fits that far into there and all this material is not going to be cut. The tricky part with that is as my tool cuts around the outside it will manage to leave a sharp corner there. So the problem is I wouldn't be able to fit the two together. So it's very important that I can actually allow for that rounding on both sides depending on the tool that I'm using. And Archam Insignia's Inlay Wizard automatically allows you to do that. So first of all let's open the part that's going to have these exit letters and cut, cutting them as a male. So you can see here we've got the letters the same size and I'm going to do an inlay toolpath on this. I have many inlay options depending what I want to do. A lot of these options I'm able to use for things like push through letters to leave a shelf on them, maybe to attach for glue or for other fastening mechanisms or even to stop light bleeding through on backlit sides. Here I'm just going to do a single straight insert, cutting all the way through the material with a 6mm tool. And if we calculate that, we'll see that it is rounding a number of these corners. So if we simulate it, we'll actually be able to see that they have quite rounded corners now, those letters, which is going to help them fit into the cavities we cut on the other part of the side. So we would save that and actually output it to the machine, start cutting it, and go back to work on the other part of our design that we were looking at. In this case, the inlay that I need to do is a female inlay. I'm going to use the same wizard though. So I want to cut a pocket, only 6mm deep because I want those letters to stick out. I must remember to use the same tool, that's very important. And also I'm going to apply an allowance to it this time. What this means is going to give me a little bit extra material that it cuts away in order to make sure that the two parts will fit together without me having to resort to sanding them. If we want to simulate that, we can see that this has provided us with the rounding on this side of it and so we'd be able to slot the letters that we cut out of the other material into these holes and have half of them standing proud. Back to the 2D, let's look at a simple 2D area clearance toolpath. In this case I don't need to allow for any inlay so I'm just going to cut this down to a depth. But it's quite a large area but with some particular corners that I want to represent accurately. As such, I'm going to set the depth and I want to use a combination of tools to cut this, a 12mm and a 3mm. Arkham Insignia will automatically look through the list of tools that I give it, find out the largest tool and then work its way down to the smallest tool, only cutting the areas it needs to with each subsequent tool. So you can see the 12mm tool has been used to hog away the material very quickly and then the 3mm tool is just going to go in and give me the detail in the corners, really giving me the detail of the smallest tool but the speed of the largest tool. And again if we want to simulate that we can simulate it individually and see that we have quite rounded corners until we go in with the 3mm and it just cleans those up and gives me a much sharper looking arrow. Next we're going to take and do a very simple toolpath on these two waves where we just cut along the vector to a particular depth. So I'm going to go down to a depth of 3mm in this case and I'm going to select a 12mm ball nose cutter in order to give us this decoration that we're looking for. Quick calculate and again using the 3D simulation we get the ability to see the shape of the ball that that's actually going to put into our sign. Next we're going to drill the corners that we've specified here. On the drilling I have many options with to how I want to drill these, circular vectors, corners of vectors or even toolpath plunges. In this case I'm going to use a 3mm tool to put some quite small holes in here. So I calculate, we can see that Arkham's put the centres into the middle of these circles. We can simulate that again some nice small holes in there. 
Finally, we're going to do a cutout pass around the outside. So we'll take, and this time, use a 12mm cutter around here. Put some lead in and out. That's at the top there. And another option that we've got in the drilling is actually to pre-drill a toolpath. One of the problems that you've got when you plunge vertically downwards is it puts a lot of stress on the tool and they're really not made to do it. So if you actually use a proper drill bit and pre-drill the entry points for the toolpath, it's going to save a lot of stress when you're cutting this out. So just to show that, if we want to go in here, select that, go back into the drilling, Select a tool that's the same size to make sure. In this case, it would be a drill bit rather than a regular end mill. And say drill toolpath plunges. And when we calculate that, we can see there is our drilling point that's going to drill that down to relieve a lot of the stress when we put our tool in there as well. So you can see we've looked at a number of the different 2D options that we've got with an Insignia, the flexibility and the fact that they've all got some nice automatic tools to really help you speed up and optimise your production.